stop sharing. No, that was too much. Okay. <laughs> Wait, share screen uh, don't overshare screen yeah exactly okay there we go good morning everyone um i know it's not morning for all of you but it's morning for us here on the west coast um so um like um, Ruben said in the introduction, um, this group is chaired by myself, Juan Cavallero, and Pamela Dingle. And we've um, done a lot of really good work. Here's an overview of what we're going to be covering today. Um, uh, yeah, you are in, you're not in presenter mode in case that. I know, but I don't, if I do that, then I fill up the slides on my whole screen. I could. <laughs> That's fine. I just, as long as you know and it's intentional, then life is good. <laughs> okay, I can try. Oh, did that do? Ooh, okay. I think it worked. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Kalia, what did you just hit? To... <laughs> okay. What did you just hit? Because I want to do that later. Oh, <laughs> I almost don't know. I, <laughs> I was in the corner. I was like, presenter view, and I clicked, yeah, but. Before, when I pushed presenter view, it made this, I think maybe if you hit it after you're sharing, I don't know. Okay, but we're here now. I figured it out, <laughs> so magically. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about a relationship with other projects, um, go over the projects that we have done, share some... <clears throat> highlights about our upcoming proposed work items, and then spend time with you all discussing past topics and future topics. This group, by the way, overall is not IPR protected because we're only discussing work that's happening in other groups that have IPR protection. And when new things have come our way, we have redirected them to the appropriate working group, which they can find an IPR home before they come to us, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so our meetings are uh, at two different times, 6 a.m. Pacific on Wednesdays and 2 p.m. Pacific on Wednesdays. This means it's... Um, more friendly for Europe some weeks than others. Um, and hopefully we can connect with more folks from the Asia Pacific with our later time. Uh, we have many folks from all over the community. And then we also have um, sort of articulated some key liaisons between specific communities. Just like Ruben was saying, there's a, there's a lot of work in DIF that's crossing between DIF and other organizations and communities. Um, and I think I like this bullet point. We focus on knowledge sharing. We can't interoperate if we don't understand each other. Um, and I think we've done a good job of inviting those kind of conversations. And we're also a clearinghouse for announcements across the community. And as I did not write this bullet point, a safe space for embarrassing questions like, really asking, making space to ask how, how stuff really works. Um, current, I wrote that bullet point. <laughs> you wrote that bullet point, I thought. <laughs> um, and currently out of scope is owning test suite operation. There are several ongoing test suite projects, which we um, actively cheerlead and support and Maybe at one day in the future when those projects have a natural conclusion, we may, you know, be a, a place for that work to go, but it's not what we're focused on right now. So um, the first of our projects um, was this stack um, that actually uh, was first drawn by Ruben and, and folks at an IIW and, um, Juan and myself did a bunch of work to fill it out in more depth. So if you click on, let's go back one slide. If you want to click on the links to these things as you watch them go by in the slides, you can go to bit.ly slash diff dash interop dash projects and get to them. 
um, because all of the links on this PDF are live. And so it highlights sort of the, the on the, on the left-hand side is the SSI architecture stack with the verifiable credentials, trusted data and storage and exchange at the top, how credentials move between different entities in these systems, and then at the bottom did resolution. And it articulates sort of what the W3Cs um, work in that area in, in several places. There's been formal W3C working groups, but there's also a credential community group that meets weekly um, that has several um, work items that, that are in this. Uh-oh, uh sorry, I didn't mean, ah, okay, we'll stay here. Um, the Decentralized Identity Foundation, which is where you are today in the middle and where we are. <clears throat> and then on the right-hand side is a Hyperledger <clears throat> projects, um, which is a, a bunch of open source projects that are building agents and um, very active. And DIDCOM shifted, as was articulated earlier, as um, moved out of ARIES to become a, a sort of joint, I think it's a diff working group, so that it's IPR protected for the, the um, protocol work. And at the bottom, you can see several other organizations that are related to all to this community um, as well. Any other thoughts about this diagram, Juan and Pam? Um, no. Um, Great. Yeah. So next is this was our super achievement. <laughs> we. Um, I can't really, can I zoom in when I'm on a slide? No, no, you can't. Um, so this, this diagram looks at all of the different, all of the different little tiny pieces and all the choices underneath each of those. Um, Pam, do you wanna describe it? Yeah, the goal here was to create the vocabulary around how we could describe any given uh, implementation. So what you absolutely cannot see here because it's 0 0.005 font um, is that we've basically created buckets and then we had, we crowdsourced people, you know, putting um, definitions in the buckets. So in theory, you can describe any implementation, at least if we've done it right, by, um, you know, describing which entry in each bucket applies to your implementation. So that was, that was the goal. Um, and we had a ton of great conversation, a ton of uh, aha moments, I think, in the process. So you can see we've, we've not only created the buckets, so the buckets are basically these vertical stacks that you see here, um, but we've also tried to categorize what things are ratified standards versus what things are emerging projects which is, I believe, what the color... Oh, look, somebody's zooming. That's uh, I went to the whimsical and pulled it over. So this right. is the very top of the map. Right, so, so the goal here really is to try to understand um, who's working in what buckets, what the options are in each buckets, and how, how any given implementation could be described. And, and those little icons are... Uh, the fave icon, if any front end people know what I'm talking about, uh, those little icons are the organization that governs the specification if there's already a spec at, for that item. So you, um, if you are looking at the PDF version of this, you can click through to the links of all the specs. Like if you wanna see the four specs about did resolution, they're all linked from there. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. And then this was a really amazing piece of work that um, actually I've, Michael did it, right? He's here. He's here. Should we have him unmute himself and describe it? I mean. I, I can do that very quickly. Yay. Yeah. 
uh, if you if you go and look at it now, it may look a little bit different uh, because we've uh, uh, migrated this over to be data driven in a Kumu map, but uh, it's it's generally unchanged otherwise. Um, <clears throat> yes, looks more like this one uh, on there. And I'm not sure which one I really like, but one of them is much easier to maintain, which is the Kumu map. Um, uh, but effectively, it's it's it has a lot of similarities to the um, uh, the one we were just looking at. It it's providing a a set of the specifications uh, and then what those relationships are between the specifications, whether it's, uh, there's a true dependency uh, between them or whether one specification references another specification uh, as part of examples or uh, as informative references. Uh, so it, it gives a mapping of how the specifications relate to one another, um, uh, some that may be in surprising ways and uh, uh, you get some cyclical uh, references in there. Uh, so it just provides that sort of information. Thanks. And um, this was one of, we actually accepted this work item as under the diff IPR because it seemed like the there was, <clears throat> Um, momentum and energy by the community to keep keep maintaining it and um, and and help us all move forward. Um, okay. Any other comments? No. Okay. And and if you if you'd like to make contributions to it, uh, you can just follow the links from our projects page to Michael's repo and just open an issue or a PR. This is uh, very very we're very grateful that Michael is. Uh, maintaining it and and uh, taking in further uh, information on this. So over time, I think it'll get even bigger um, and yeah. ho ho hopefully less daunting, even though bigger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Got to get there. We go. Ah, no. Okay, there, down, next, up, there. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Um. So we have several upcoming um, proposed work items that we're looking at. Um, one is um, very practical. So the SVIP W3C CCG plugathon um, is doing, I don't know what this sentence means. <laughs> Could you translate it once since you probably wrote it? I did write that. Um, so there are um, SVIP and CCG. There's a CCG work item for the SVIP plugathon test suite. And uh, after the next iteration of that in March, uh, we want to do an analysis and, and write some sort of um, guidance for people how to, how, just how to use it, how to see if your stuff is compatible. Um, and that would be a good time to revisit our um, earlier internal project of overviewing the ARIES test suites, of which there is one more being debuted in another room at this conference. Um, so yeah, we're sort of pausing while um, there is a you know a a series of sprints to define that, expand that test suite, and then we want to return to that later. Um, and that would be the only practical work item we're, we're thinking about in terms of hands-on test suite stuff. Anything else gets us into the IPR danger zone. Right. That sounds great. Thanks. Um, and then conceptual and educational work, um, there's a conversation ongoing about you user experience and interoperability. Um, DIFF has a product manager community of practice that meets bi-weekly and shares learnings from the folks who are um, more on the UI design side of, 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 of these projects. And there's also um, from within the My Data community, a sort of conversation about human-centered interops. So we want to contribute to those conversations and see what role we play in them. And then we are going to be having an invited guest series exploring corner and obscure use cases, machine identity, for example, non-human identity, data provenance, software supply chain, notarial credentialing, etc. cetera. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. Who wants to, <laughs> I don't want I, I can, yeah, I can help with this. So I, I cut and pasted here our agenda file. Um, we recently followed the project manager's uh, lead and put links to all the recordings directly into the minutes document. So if you go to our agenda page, you not only see the guest and agenda for the next one or two meetings, you also see all the previous ones. Uh, so you can control F that and see all kinds of, uh, you know, o overview of, of everything we've been doing for months. Um, so for instance, uh, we could you just mentioned the, the um, UX and hu human centric definition of interop conversation that's been sort of going in parallel to our mostly technical focus. You'll see here that on the 11th of November, Adrian Gropper and uh, I think was Chris Lee there that day? Maybe not. Um, uh, they, they presented on this topic and you can just, you know, watch the recording on Zoom, uh, treat it like a podcast, download it to your phone while you're washing dishes. You know, you can, uh, you can dive deep on this stuff whenever you want. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I will say too that, you know, the, the presenters are, are amazing and I think they represent a lot of really important um, both topics and points of view, but also the questions are pretty good because you're getting questions from, uh, you know, from people across all the different communities, right, on a subject that, you know, sometimes we all present our topics within our bubble and we get a certain set of questions. So from my perspective, it's cool to see the questions that come from, you know, from those farther afield people. Great. Future topics. So this is where we wanted to open up the floor to all of you who are watching and hear your ideas about what you'd like to see us cover in the coming um, months. And and also that link you see is to the top of the agenda file where we actually keep a running list of, of suggested topics. And when we run out of guests to invite, we just check that list and see who we know and try and, uh, you know, get, get to all of those lists. So uh, those, those suggestions are invaluable to us. And anyone can write to it, yes? Like if, if any of oh, you yeah. maybe aren't regular participants, but you think there's something that should really go in that list, um, please, you know, you are more than welcome to add that. You're more than welcome to talk to us about those, those options as well. We're very eager to hear. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, um, um, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, here, I can put it in the list. Disposable identities. I love it, Adam. I love it. Um, disposable identities and revocable anonymity is... Um, something that's been on my radar a while and I haven't known exactly whom to invite. If you have any ideas, Adam, please unmute yourself and name names. We want names. Okay, that one's... <laughs> All right, we have names, so we need to follow up with Adam is what I'm hearing here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need a revoked anonymity of those names. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I put the link there straight to the HackMD version of our agenda, and you'll see that if you're logged into HackMD, you can, you can uh, write directly into it. Uh, might might be might be a little easier to see if you do the write write only one the, the pencil one. So yeah. All right, we will definitely add revocable anonymity. Oh, there. Okay, it's happening now. <laughs> 
we live edit here. <laughs> If we really wanted to get into a debate, I guess the question is, is disposable identities and revocable anonymity the same thing? Or do we need two anonyms? Uh, they are probably two different things. You are correct. <laughs> I think of them as adjacent, but uh, I'll, I'll leave Adam Burns off the hook for the other one. <laughs> I consider those topics close cousins. <laughs> but can can be used independently or together nicely. Uh, Michael, you want to explain what a synthetic identity is? Uh, synthetic identity is uh, one of the big areas of fraud currently, uh, where uh, it's a composed identity. Uh, some elements are real, some elements are not, and it's actually a there's been several white papers from the Federal uh, Reserve on it because it's a huge okay. cost factor. So it's it's not a good okay. thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the other side of the disposable identity. Right. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, those those seem linked. And yeah, definitely. And and uh, one thing that is not out of scope for our group is um, privacy implications or abuse implications. Um, I think a lot of uh, you know interoperability isn't only a happy path engineering question. There's a lot of ways in which when you uh, bolt on interoperability at the last minute to something, you're opening up all whole new attack surfaces and, and uh, that that might be something we uh, think about it on the more practical, during the more practical topics. I don't know what that sound was. Other, other ideas or should we? Uh, proceed with the slide. You can always throw them in the chat and we'll yeah. pick them up and add them in the background too. <laughs> All right, who wants oh. to do it? You're gonna do it, Clea, yeah. I can do it. Um, how can you participate? So we have a GitHub repository like everything at Diff and you can subscribe to our mailing list and see announcements and pre-reading. Um, also, we post the recordings and past minutes, I think. Um, and you, if you fill out the right form, you will get meeting invitations onto your calendar. There's also a bibliography that we have to support learning up, and you can join the diff Slack channel. So there is a specific channel for our group. Um, but uh -huh. you have to have this community identifier or you're out of luck as far as joining. So, and it's not yep. obvious. That, that, that's an important- Am I even in our group Slack channel? <laughs> now you've got me wondering. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna tag you in it just for that. Uh, no, so we, we um, um, this is an important note for people that are watching this who are not currently uh, DIFF members. So uh, some of our groups are members only, like any IPR protected group is members only. And even then uh, we ask only people that have signed the relevant working group IPR agreement to participate actively. Um, but the um, interop group, the special interest groups, the product managers community of practice uh, are open to non-members. So those more non-member friendly groups tend to use the mailing list more than Slack. So the mailing list, you can sign up for the mailing list even if your organization isn't a member of DIFF. Um, so we try to steer most of the uh, long discussion threads towards the mailing list instead of the Slack channel because it includes more uh, regular attendees of our group. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're on the fence about joining DIFF or on the fence about whether or not decentralized identity is good for your project. Um, coming to our group in the meantime is warmly 
welcome and invited or listening to our recordings of old um, meetings, totally, this is a public good. Um, so definitely feel free to, you know, share those links and those videos. Okay, so are we, do we have another slide? I, I think we have no more slides. Um, no more slides. And then, Inform it. It's uh, did did come needs the room, but we can field some questions in advance to leave them more of Q and A. Um, Any questions, criticisms, veiled insults? You know, we like all that. Stuff. Anything we've forgotten from the people who are members? Like anything that a new person who wanted to get involved in this interrupt group would need to know? I, I have a kind of, maybe it could be even a stupid question. What What is the, the component of, of the open identity that would let you say, you know, sort of open ID login to different different places, kind of replace the various uh, single sign-ons, you know, like the Google sign-on, the Apple sign-on, the Microsoft sign-on. What would you call that? Is that is that open the open ID part? So we there is a actually um, a specification that was written in diff called uh, well we call it did psyop. I don't know if that was the of, official piece, but we can get you the link to that. That effort has actually moved to the Open ID Foundation. So right now there are joint meetings in the Open ID Foundation between the Open ID Connect Working Group and a lot of members of the diff um, community to try, and there are various drafts actually under discussion there for exactly this purpose to try to use OpenID Connect mechanisms to pass verifiable credentials. So that might be what you're looking for. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely think um, single sign-on and federation is um, huge. It's, it's a huge topic. Um, and this group could talk about it more. <laughs> uh, I think I, I find it a little daunting. Uh, and also the, the uh, like, like Pam just said, the relationship between DIFF and OIDF is getting stronger. And I think the groups are working together on the next iteration of the specs governing federation. Um, but also uh, the, there's a, uh, the federation group at OIDF might be a good place to look in the meantime to get up to speed on what's already possible. Uh, and different SSI systems, I think, do that differently. There's there's a, a lot of different um, approaches. Probably one good one to look at would be on the Matter Global developer portal. They've got a few articles on different ways of combining today's OIDC with um, SSI principles and, and data flows. It's a good one. It, it just seems like it's kind of like the killer application that it kind of ties everything together because at some point someone has to log into something. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 that's why I said it's huge. It's huge. Um, there isn't a um, uniform approach. I, I think there are different ways of overlapping with it depending on how the relationships map, um, because those those standards that we have today were written for a certain context, a certain relationship of, you know, power relationships between actors and, and data access assumptions that are changing. So, um, yeah, that's definitely the elephant in the room. That's that's what's going to change the most as SSI goes more and more mainstream. Um, yep, and if you haven't heard it, I mean, Didcom and Chappie are both. Uh, other alternatives, like, you know, so if you're coming into this and you haven't heard those other things, those are other pieces that I would consider being on that same, in that same bucket. So they might be also things you're interested in researching. Thanks. Are we going to we gonna get kicked out now or are you kicking us out? Oh, Ken, it looked like you were speaking and then you were on. Yeah, I was, I was going to say a follow-up question, just a real quick one. Um, all the her, you know, all of what I've seen with PSYOP and all of that stuff is really about the identity token. Do you know if there's any work going on with the access token so you can use it within a service mesh, you know, microservices service mesh for authorization? 
Ooh. I, if there is, I would love to know about it. Okay, well, maybe we'll start it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you're really talking about is service to service um, authorization, right? Mm -hmm. And you can go end user to uh, service, uh, you know, identifier, you know, uh, uh, transport, <laughs> whatever you want. Right. I will mention that during the last uh, networking break, me and Balash have an item, uh, have a uh, side stage event called initiating your first work item at DIFF. <laughs> so, I mean, if you, you, you manifested the idea, you have to lead the working item. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it works? Cool. Okay, are we, are we keeping?